Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Yo Yo Man with Barnsley in today's episode we are going to review our summer transfer business for our first and only season in the Premier League with Barnsley a lot, well not a lot of money compared to Premier League standards but for Barnsley standards a lot of money have been spent a lot of new players has come in let's see how you think I've done so we will start with the outs where we recouped 10.25 million pounds of our transfer budget back. George Miller left to join Chavez for 68k. Just a 23 year old under, he was in the under 23s doing absolutely nothing. So we got a little bit of money for him. Beecho, who we signed on a free transfer in our very first season in charge of Barnsley, has left the club and joined Albacete for £250,000. He did play a good number of games for us, 18 games in our first season, 19 games in our second, but he was never one of our main players. Jacob Brown has left the club and joined Hibernian for 250k, a right winger who was very rarely used by myself. Um, he joined years ago at Barnsley and never really did the business for me and he wasn't somebody I was interested in. My director of football or my head of youth development accepted an offer for Bailey Hawksworth. He's joined Stoke City. For 775k would not have been a deal I would have agreed myself but as we are only here for one more season with Barnsley I'm never going to be able to use this guy anywhere he wouldn't be someone who I uh, developed and saw through to the first team next up was Mikko Albanoz for 1.2 million pounds to Swansea City this guy rejected two offers of an idea scepter for five million pounds right at the very beginning of the transfer window and he kept rejecting the offers He's finally left only for 1.2 and joined Swansea in the championship. If you can't remember, we signed him, I think it was in the January transfer window of our first season. He broke his leg at the beginning of the second season and that was it for him in terms of appearances. He never really appeared for us in the league again, only once in the cup. And to be able to recoup our money from him and make a little bit profit for a 30-year-old left back is nothing to sneeze at. And finally, the biggest sale of the summer was a £7.5 million move. Is that to Japan or China? I think it's the South Korea. John uh, Book. Dimitri Kavaria. I was starting right back for the first season. He was a bit, bit uh, he was a bit part player in the second season. Um, but managed to get seven and a half million pound and he only had one year left on his deal. So whilst he would have been a decent little squad option, I'm happy to see him out of the club for seven and a half million quid. And now we will start with the ins. We'll start with Gonzalo Ramos. Our starting attacker midfielder from last season rejoins the club on a season long loan. I'm hoping he will be just as effective in the Premier League as he was in the Championship. He has developed quite nicely over the course of last season. And we get him in for 1.8k per week. W wages and finances were a huge part of our summer transfer window. So to get somebody in with this quality for that low of a weekly wage absolutely fantastic he will be our starting attacker midfielder in the center as well next up was abel ruiz we signed on loan from barcelona we appear 100 percent of his wages so 11k per week but he's either going to be our starting left midfielder or backup or backup striker so he's going to have plenty of opportunities to be able to get into the first team should we need it one of the main reasons that i signed him was obviously as a replacement of the likes of reese nelson and jordan i from seasons gone by but uh, having an inside forward or an inverted wing on the left hand side hasn't actually been that great for us you've known I've complained about it over the course of two seasons now two of our best players haven't really played particularly well on that left hand side so Abel Ruiz probably won't start but he might end up as the season goes on if it doesn't work the change in uh, play, play a role he will then start uh, more games as things progress Next up was our first free transfer for, uh, first and only free transfer for the first team, Andoni Garesabel from uh, Real Sociedad on a free transfer. It, just, it was just silly. I couldn't not sign him. He's, he was on a free transfer. He's on 25k per week. He's going to be our starting right back, three and a half star current, four star potential. Um, he's a big upgrade on the likes of Jordan Williams, who was starting last season. And whilst he's, he isn't the best player, uh, his physicals in particular are lacking for the sort of player we need to play at right back. He's going to be more than good enough for this season and we needed to look at bargain basement players to get us through the rest of the season. This player was signed by me, director of football. He sits in the under-23s. He will do absolutely nothing. Next up is Matthias Espinosa, probably our worst signing <laughs> of the summer. £700,000. He is a left-sided player. He is a winger on the left-hand side. So he's going to get the start, at least initially at the start of the season. It will be between him and Abel Ruiz. 
depending on who plays better. He is a very versatile player, so he can play pretty much anywhere across the midfield. Um, but he will be starting as our winger. Now, he's only a three-star, three-star. A good player for most Skybet Championship sides. But he was much higher rated by me scouts in my defence. Physically, he's not particularly great, but technically, he's fantastic. Similar to Arjen van der Heerder in a lot of ways. Uh, mentally, he's okay. So we'll see how we get on playing a winger on the left-hand side rather than an inverted winger or an inside forward. Next up will be our starting goalkeeper, and this is where we're starting to spend our money. £4.1 million pounds for Francis Zoho from uh, Deportivo La Coruña in Spain. A 22-year-old Nigerian goalkeeper. Already got 34 caps for the national side, which isn't too bad. Three and a half star current, four star potential is a big upgrade on uh, Jamal Blackman. So uh, I'm hoping that he can do the business for us. Now, 22 years old, you'll notice, even though we're only here for one more season, I still wanted to set up Barnsley to be able to succeed in the seasons coming on. So I didn't want to sign too many players that over the age of 30 and stuff like that. So a lot of our players are in their early 20s. Next up was Nicholas Capaldo from Boca Juniors for £4.4 .4 million. He will be our starting centre midfielder. Just an absolutely fantastic box-to-box -box midfielder. His physicals are what attracted me straight away. Absolutely to die for. He is going to be our engine in the centre of midfield. And he replaces Alex Moat as our starting centre midfielder. A decent player for most Premier League sides. I'm hoping he can prefer, uh, perform even better than that. And we'll see how he goes over the course of a season. He's one of three Argentinians who have signed. Next up was Lewis Montanel from FC Vitorel for four and a half million pounds. He just reminded me exactly how Esposito was last season with a, a better attributes actually. Um, 19 years old, four and a half million pounds was his release clause. He's on eight grand per week. He's going to be our starting striker. I'm hoping for big things. He's going to improve as the season goes on as he does have plenty of uh, potential to grow into. And as an advanced forward, he fits our system perfectly. And he's the one I'm most excited about probably. Next up was Fausto Vera from Argentinos Juniors for £4.5 million. He is going to replace Dimitri Bissoli in defensive midfield. We had money left at the end of the window and although Bissoli played absolutely incredibly in the championship and he will be our backup central midfielder and defensive midfielder, he just he doesn't compare to this guy. And for the sort of price we're paying for these kind of boys, it made no sense not to sign him. 33k per week, 4-star current, 5-star potential. He is probably the best player at the club, maybe. And finally, our highest outlay of the season was £4.8 million for Alan Franco, a centre-back from Argentina. A three and a half star current, four star potential. I think he, him and Tisserand will be able to develop a quite a nice partnership. He's already been capped by Argentina, which is great. He's the highest earner at the club on £41,500 per week. But I'm hoping for big things from this boy. I think he will be able to... At least be able to compete in the in the Premier League with the rest of our squad the way it is. So after all that business in the summer transfer window, we still have a pretty healthy transfer budget and wage budget. 15 million essentially and 60k per week in the wages. So if we need to make moves in January, we have the funds and the capability to be able to do that. In terms of our strongest first 11, and this is how I see it. If everybody's fit, everybody's available. This is how our boys will line up. Izoho in goal, Garasa Bell at right back, Frank Owen Tisserand at centre back, with Tony Herrero keeping his spot at left back. Fausto Vero and, uh, and Capaldo in the centre. Ian van der Heerde keeps his spot in the right wing. Gonzalo Ramos in behind uh, Luis Montano and Espinosa on the left hand side. The left wing is the main position of contention. This could quite easily be Abel Ruiz as either an inverted winger or an inside forward. But I am going to persist with Espinosa for at least the first five or ten games. To see how our system, if it benefits our system at all, having a winger in it. So that takes us to our opening game in the Premier League. Now it is an opposition we faced last season. It's going to be Southampton away from home. We were able to beat them in the League Cup on penalties. So maybe we can do a similar sort of performance today and pinch three points. We are away from home though. So it is not going to be easy no matter what. And this is how our, our lineup's going to start. Pretty much our strongest first eleven. But um, Bruno Costa comes in, in behind the strike as Gonzalo Ramos still has his suspension from last season. Espinosa gets a start on left wing, Van der Heerde on the right, Montano up top. I just want to see how these boys perform. Have, have our signings been good? Are they going to adapt to Premier League life quickly? Or is it going to take time for them to be able to get used to the system, get used to the country and then perform after that? But 
we face a strong side to start with. Southampton have been in the league for many years and they now have developed quite a nice side. Den Donker at centre-back is a good, good centre-half. Uh, have they signed, who have they signed him from? From Wolves for £22 million last season. Uh, Rasmus Nissen Christensen is definitely a very, very good wing-back. He's going to start on the right-hand side for them. And they've just got, a, they've got a Premier League squad. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. We'll find out together. So straight away, first 10 minutes, you can see Southampton have... Uh, taking domination of the ball and in terms of shots so we went straight to the cautious team mentality it's something i'm going to be doing a lot over the course of this season particularly away from home but um we'll see if it actually pays dividends or not it is 40 minutes in i was just checking that i had key highlights on i do have key highlights on and that was the first half of our first premier league game not a single highlight <laughs> I think it's a case of two teams cancelling each other out. As you can see, if you look at the bottom panel, Southampton are also playing as a cautious team mentality. So two counter-attacking teams waiting for the other team to switch. Um, but I'm not going to do it. I'm more than happy with a nil-nil draw away from home in our very first Premier League game. And is this going to be a game with zero highlights? It's not. 15 minutes to go. We have our first highlight. Vera plays out a... Oh my dears. What... A goal that is by Tony Herrero. His first goal of the season, Fosto Vera with the assist. And for a first highlight, that's a pretty special one. Vera picks up the ball from Bruno Costa. First time strike on the left peg. That's goal of the season. Our first, our first goal in the Premier League's goal of the season. And with 10 minutes to go, we will look to make some changes. Herrero can get a hero's welcome off. Ben Williams can come on for him. Uh, Arjen van der Heer is going to come off. We're going to bring on... Abel Ruiz on that right hand side and we're going to bring on Alex Mort for Bruno Costa in the attack and midfield spot an unusual role for him we haven't played him there previously but he can play there pretty competently so it's always an option for us should we need it and going into the final three minutes this is the most dull game we've ever had but I don't give a damn Southampton nil Barnsley won first game in the Premier League first three points we will take that to the bank absolutely wonderful stuff Vera did get injured he's only out for one or two days that is not too bad by me as I believe he got man of the match or was one of the uh, Southampton players might have won it it was Tony Herrero who ended up getting up due to his goal but Vera had a very very good game a 7.8 in the defensive midfield role obviously picking up the assist in terms of the league table then we sit in eighth would you take that right now I would take that right now obviously as part of this save we only get one season in the Premier League so we need to set a good benchmark for all future clubs with Barnsley this season. And that, even though it was the most boring game you're ever going to see on my channel, <laughs> I am more than happy with how things are going. Looking forward to the next episode then. I wouldn't mind some games where we are realistically going to be able to compete. So with that in mind, I think it's going to be Sheffield United and West Ham. It is a bit of a big jump, but um, we've got we've got a chance against them too. The likes of Bournemouth and Newcastle could potentially be options, but they are both away from home, and I would like a home game in there. Um, Liverpool, I don't really want to play, <laughs> to be quite frank. Not on a live com anyway. So I think that's what's going to be. It's going to be Sheffield United West Ham. We will see them next time. But anyway, please let me know in the comments down below what do you think of our summer transfer business? Have we been smart? Have we spent enough? Have we spent too little? What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. But if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.